good friend list just finished. Rangers 3, West Ham United 1 at Ibrox. I know it was only friendly. It's only pre-season, but we're going to discuss it anyway. I'm going to give you the highlights as it happened. My reaction to it a little bit, but nothing to be taken too serious from here on in, apart from when discussing West Ham's left-back. <laughs> that can be taken seriously. But anyway, at halftime, it was nil-nil. It was a, a decent enough 45. It was boring in patches, but both teams also knocked the ball about nicely. It looked bright in spells. Rangers were coming down the sides really good in the first 45 minutes. But two major talking points for West Ham Knight fans. So the first one was Mikel Antonio's chance. Lovely ball by Pablo Fernandes, put him through and go. First touch was a little bit too heavy. Allowed McLaughlin to come out and close him down. Decent save, corner kick to West Ham. But it's just another one-on-one -on -one that Antonio has missed pre-season. However, I thought Antonio in the first half looked quite good. I thought his movement was really well. I thought down the left-hand side, left side he was causing problems for Rangers. But his link-up play with Saeed ben Rama and Jared Bowen as well with the passing in around the 18-yarder I thought was really good as well. So it was a decent performance from him in the first 45. Just missed that one-on-one. -on -one. But the big talking point, it's not the result. It's not the fact that we conceded three goals. It's what happened to Nath Aguard. And we're going to have to wait and see how serious this injury is. And fingers crossed it's not too bad. Cresswell just rolled the ball back to him. He was really poor initially. It was really, really poor from Aguero. He misses the ball. Um, and then Kulak gets in. But the recovery from Aguero was exceptional. You know, he, he somehow swivels right round the striker, gets back in, puts in a, an unbelievable tackle. And it goes out for a goal kick. It ricochets off the striker, but off the striker goes out for a goal kick. So initially, like, oh my God, oh wow, what a tackle. And then he's sitting on the ground. The physio comes on. It's not looking too good. Both physios have to carry him off. Can't put any weight whatsoever on that ankle. Um, his ankle blew up pretty much immediately. And it's the one that he's had a little bit of difficulty with at Rennes over the last couple of years as well. So it's not looking too good. But we'll have to wait for official word. However, it's going to be a bit of a nervous wait till we find out from West Ham just how serious that injury was. It's kind of overshadowed the whole game for me, if I'm honest with you, because there's a few promising performances, a few worrying performances as well. But it's the injury to Nathan Gerd that's quite worrying. Um, anyway, nil nil half time. Second half got a bit livelier, didn't it? Four goals in the second half, three of them coming in what the space of ten minutes for Rangers. They just ripped us apart. That. First 10, 15 minutes of the second half was all Rangers and they just absolutely ripped us to shreds. So the first goal came in the 48th minute, just three minutes in to the restart in the second half. And it came from Aaron Creswell's side. And unfortunately, he had a big part to play in it. Lovely ball down the right channel. Creswell goes sliding in to intercepts it, completely misses the ball altogether. Um, Matondo picks up on the right-hand side, cuts in, picks out Tom Lawrence, who's also just come on. Both those players just came on at half-time. New signing from Derby County. Bang, first touch finish into the back net. Really good goal from Rangers. But when you watch replay back more and more, you're thinking, what is Adam Creswell doing? He wasn't looking great at this point. But then the second goal comes, and it doesn't really get any better. Again, it comes from that right-hand side. Now, Adam Creswell's not to blame for this goal. Um, I, because it's a friendly, the lack of coverage or the lack of replays can be a little bit frustrating at times because James Tavenier gets it, comes bombing down sort of the right-hand side, sort of towards the middle of the pitch. But there's just nobody. There is nobody there. There's nobody tracking him. There's nobody in his way. From the halfway line to the 18-yarder, He's just got a clear run, and he just goes for it. Saeed ben Ram is the one running after him, but he gets nowhere near him, quite frankly. I don't know where Finals is. No idea where Lanzini and Declan Rice is at this point. It's just, there's just nothing. So, bombing forward, he goes, rolls it to Tom Lawrence. He flicks it on to Ryan Kent, who smashes it across the face of the goal into the back of it. Another really go good goal by Rangers, but two goals in the space of 65. Five seconds or something stupid like that. By the 49th minute, it was 2 0 no Rangers. They came out, bam, bam, bam. They upped the tempo completely. And we just didn't really know what to do, to be honest with you. And then it wasn't getting any better. It was still all Rangers at this point. I mean, we had to wait nine minutes for the next goal. But even in between goal number two and goal number three, it was pretty much just Rangers, 
Rangers, Rangers. And this goal was to come from Matondo this time. Um, again, down the right-hand side, ball gets cut back to Tom Lawrence, takes that first touch, it's a little bit heavy, but falls to Matondo, turns and smashes it into the roof of the net. Um, great substitution appearances for those two tonight, but pretty you know, it's obviously game over at this point. And I know in pre-season you're not too worried, but it was it was concerning. It was a bit concerning. I thought Creswell looked poor tonight, and it's, he's looked poor all pre-season thus far from what we've seen. Against Servette, I didn't really notice him. Now, we couldn't see the Ipswich or the Bowdoin Wood game unless we were there, obviously, played against Ipswich, but we could only the people at the game got to see that. But then against Reading on Saturday, he didn't look particularly great, and he was only on the pitch for half an hour. But tonight, he'd, again, he looked quite poor. And that first goal for Rangers is almost something that you come to expect to, to some extent. And it was a little bit worrying, his performance. Moy started uh, racking up all the substitutions at this point, and some of them did make a difference. I'll get on to a couple of players' performances in just a minute. But one thing was clear and a little bit worrying was Declan Rice's body language when it was 2-0. Um, I, I assume it was Tavernier. Someone on the right-hand side played a ball into Lundstrom in the middle of the pitch. Declan had Lundstrom and Kamara next to him. And he, he just put his arms up and then put them down again. As I say, what am I meant to do here? You know, it's where's the, where's the rest of the players? That just nobody. It was a little bit concerning when he got taken off. He just went straight down the the tunnel. And like I said, it's not. Um, it's only preseason. It's not that worrying or anything. Like I'm not angry. I'm not disappointed or anything. Emotionally, I'm not that bothered. But it's a bit concerning. There's some individual performers. That is a little bit concerning. But there was also some good ones as well. We were to go on and score our own goal in the 70th minute. Thomas Suchek, a corner in. Um, the Kurt Zuma got his head to it. Fell to Thomas Suchek inside the six-yarder who prodded it home. But I thought he had a good game. When Thomas Suchek came on, I thought he was spraying the ball about really well. And it's sort of, I'll be the first one to criticise and say Suchek on the ball is limited. And I still think he is. But I'll tell you what, bar Jared Bowen, I thought he was our best passer of the ball tonight throughout the 90 minutes. Um, he was the one that was getting on it, moving it left to right, trying to get forward. I thought he looked quite good when he came on, actually. I thought Sufal made a big, big difference. I thought Ben Johnson on Saturday was poor at left back going forward. Defensively, he's fine. Going forward, I thought he killed too many of our attacks. Tonight, there was just that one opportunity he got to do something in the final third. Lovely ball out from Saeed Ben Rama. Jared Bowen sort of lets it run out to Ben Johnson, makes his move into the 18 yards. You've got good runs from Bowen and Antonio. Ben Johnson's touch is just too heavy. Um, he has to run after it. And him and Barisic, Rangers left backs come together. It's a really good tackle. Goes out for a goal kick in the end. But it was just that pivotal moment. You think you've got to be taking these chances. But Sufal comes on down that right hand side. And I think he's. Uh, levels above Ben Johnson um, going forward. I know it's really friendly, but this isn't the only, this is something that you've seen last season in the Premier League. Do you know what I mean? What I'm talking about here isn't something you think, oh, well, it's only a friendly bang on. We saw this in the Premier League. We saw this in the Europa League where Ben Johnson fantastic defensively going forward, very limited. Sufal going forward much better. And it was evident again today. Jared Bowen, um, by far the best player on the pitch, really. Whenever he got it, it looked like he was going to cause Rangers trouble towards the end of the game. I think he just thought, bugger it, I'm going to do it myself now because nothing else is happening here. Um, really, really good performance from him. He's picked up, although it's pre-season, he's picked up where he left off at the end of last season. Really looking forward to seeing Jared Bowen next season. All the evidence so far in pre-season, although it's just two games, suggests that he's still confident and he's still in form. Um, apart from that book, there wasn't that many performers that were as much to write home about. Flynn Downs looks neat and tidy, but the, it was a bit of a strange role for him because when he came on, um, he came on with Suchek and then Lanzini and Rice went off. And, he end, and then when Conor Coventry came on later on, Flynn Downs was almost playing like attacking field or something. He was further forward because Coventry, Conor Coventry was doing the, the sitting in midfield, which was a weird sort of makeup. Of of that, um, Lanzini was poor. I thought when he was on the pitch. I thought Ben Rama. 
at times looks really, really bright. You know, he just he did a cross in the first half side, Ben Ram, a fantastic cross. We'd have liked to have seen a replay, but you can't because it's friendly. On the money, you know, he's when he came over to the right hand side and got involved with Jared Bowen and Antonio, we're playing neat little triangles, but other times it's just a bit uh, just a bit frustrating. Um, but anyway, that's it. I'm not gonna speak for too too long because uh, it's just a friendly 3-1 defeat. If I was a Rangers fan. I'd be pretty excited by what I've seen in the second half, to be honest with you. I thought the play between Lawrence, Kent and Matondo was absolutely fantastic. And I think Lundstrom played really, really well, as did Ryan Kent and Kamara in midfield. I thought they completely overran us tonight in, in midfield. We didn't really have much going on, but we only got two friendlies left. And there were some players I was hoping to see a little bit more from tonight. I thought we saw a little bit more from Antonio and um, stated in the second half couple of opportunities for runs was found offside, but much better um, from Saturday from Mikhail Antonio, I thought. Mubama came on, looked busy as always, but I'll leave it there. We've got a player rating show tomorrow on Patreon where we go through every single player in a little bit more detail. But that's the review. Um, fingers crossed this Snafigwer thing isn't too serious, and fingers crossed that that plane Jesse Lingard was on during the game has landed in London. There's a lot of talk, a lot of people are doing their um, investigating, if you like, and they found a plane that they think is the one that Jesse Lingard was on a private charter from Manchester to London. So we'll have to wait and see what's happening there. But fingers crossed for good news on the Guard and Jesse Lingard tomorrow. But anyway, if you've enjoyed this quick review, please do drop a like on the Sky News channel. And I'll be back tomorrow with some form of video. Catch you in a bit.